You may have noticed I've been on vacation. I'm back, but I don't want to be here. I'd rather be back on vacation. So this video is going to be a short, easy video to ease me back into the rat race. I'm going to talk about how you can extend the battery life, get the most out of the battery life of your UV5R, how to make it last longer in the first place, and then what you can do if it dies or isn't lasting as long as you think it should. There's not a whole lot to talk about, so this video will be short, quick and easy, as long as I don't veer off topic. You know I don't like to veer off topic because I know how important your time is. If your time wasn't important, you wouldn't be wasting it here on YouTube, right? So I'll keep this video short, but first, allow me to veer off topic and waste your time. I wanna talk about comments left on my videos. I've brought this up before. As you know, we do not allow stupidity, arrogance, know-it-allness, dickheadedness. We don't allow that on this channel. We will call you out, not just me, other viewers as well. Now, most YouTube channels, they just let that stupidity slide. You can say whatever you want with no repercussions. Not here. You say something, we're gonna hold you accountable. And this is very disturbing for some viewers. They're just not used to it. They're not, they're used to being able to say whatever they want. It's as though YouTube is a soapbox for their stupidity. Not here. Now, a lot of the complaints that I get in the comments is that I bash ham operators. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that I do not bash ham radio operators. I bash idiots that brag about being ham radio operators. These are the know-it-alls, the ones that write 10 page books on explaining things, smarter than thou, holier than thou, than all of the rest lowly GMRS operators or those of us too stupid to pass the test. Those are the people I make fun of. It just so happens that they also brag about being ham operators. It's the first thing they usually say is, oh, I've been a ham for years. I have two ham licenses. So I do wanna take a moment to read this comment, which sums up how much of the world feels about sad hams. Those are the people, those are the idiots that brag about being ham operators and then proceed to make themselves look like morons trying to make themselves look smart. This comment was left by Jiu-Jitsu for All. I'm gonna read it. I'll put it on the screen so you can read along with me. He is a ham radio operator. He opens with that. Been a ham operator for decades. And for the life of me, I'm still perplexed at the idiots that intentionally bully, scare, discourage, posture, etc. newer hams or folks looking into getting their license. They have such a pathetic existence and small man complex that they feel the necessity to prove how important and smart they are and how stupid and clueless you are. All they're proving is what fools they are. My experience is that they are almost always cowards that they would never say something derogatory to your face. To you sad hams, I feel sorry for you. You're like a retarded child. You just don't get it. Okay, so why we're here. I wanna talk about getting more battery life from your UV5R radio. Now, as many people will point out, these radios are junk, right? We know that, but they work. They get the job done. That's why so many people love them because they're 25 bucks. Yeah, it's junk. We know that, but it works. I can talk to my friend. He can talk back to me. We can be miles apart and we hear each other. Most of us don't care about the harmonics or the spurious emissions. Normal people don't care about that. Normal people just want to talk and it does that. But one of the downfalls is the battery. The batteries are small. They work great at first, but they often stop holding a charge. When you first get it, you can keep it on standby for half a day, a day or more. Uh, you can transmit. When you transmit, it's gonna suck a lot more juice out and run the battery down more, but you can usually get a whole day's use out of them. I usually do when we use them for monitoring because we don't transmit on these because that would be illegal. But I have heard rumors of people using these to talk on GMRS or FRS frequencies, they tell me that they can usually talk for a, you know, the afternoon, talking a lot when they're out off-roading or hiking or whatever, but that slowly decreases over time. The other issue is that the chargers 
I've had more issues with chargers. You gotta remember that when you buy this radio, it comes with the charger, the plug, the radio, the antenna, earpieces, and I don't know, a belt clip, whatever, and you get it all for 25 bucks. These things are junk. So I've had several of these die. The lights will stop working. It's got a little, it's not plugged in, but it's got the little charger light there on almost all of them. I've had eight or so UV5Rs over the last year that I use only for monitoring. The lights, it's supposed to be green when it's charging, red when it's charging, and green when it's charged. That's the first thing to go. I don't think I have one of these that the lights worked right either out of the box or for more than a few months. So you never know, is it charging? Is it not charging? I've had a few of them just stop charging, just stopped working. I had one catch on fire. It started smoking. I looked down, I saw smoke coming out of it, so I threw it away. And I've also had a couple of the batteries actually just go dead. It just stopped working, you know, after about a year. So some of the things you can do to make the battery last longer, it's all just common sense stuff. It applies to your cell phone as well. Keep the batteries uh, cool and dry. Don't get them wet. Don't leave them in your car or your Jeep with the windows rolled up or it gets 150 degrees in there. Don't leave your dog or your baby in there either. I've done it a hundred times. That's probably why I've killed some of my batteries. I've done it a hundred times with the batteries, not my kids or the dog. That's probably why I killed the batteries and in my case, why the batteries didn't last so long. Don't let them overheat, physically get too hot because that will either destroy it or reduce the life of it. Don't leave the radio in the charger for months at a time charging. When you're not using it, keep it separate from the charger. And don't leave it charged up at 100% all the time or for months at a time because that can wear down the life cycle or make the battery not last as long. And try, even though I've done this 100 times, try not to let the battery run all the way down to where it just dies. And you let it run down to just dead mode, that reduces the uh, life cycle of the battery. So try not to do that. I try. I do. It happens all the time. It's hard. It's hard to avoid. And then even if you do all of that, it's just not going to last that long. So what do you do when it's no longer holding a charge, when your stupid charger isn't lighting up right? Now you could just buy a whole new UV5R. It's 25 bucks. Actually, I've seen them now ranging from 25 to $50. The problem with that is that the new ones, apparently the FCC has been cracking down on the Baofeng man. Baofeng. Baofeng. Ba so the newer ones I have read have restrictions on them so that you can't transmit on certain frequencies, such as FRS and GMRS frequencies. You can still listen to those frequencies, but you can't transmit on them. Now, doing that on an old one would be illegal. We all know that. We've talked about that many times. But if you use your UV5R for transmitting on FRS or GMRS frequencies illegally, you've weighed the options, you've, you've weighed the risk and you do that anyway. If you buy a new one, you may not be able to do that if you get one of the newer models. There's also a lot of knockoffs of these floating around. I've read more comments from people saying they just bought one of these, you know, the super cheap $22 ones, and it just fell apart or didn't work, or it, it wasn't a root, the real high quality Baofeng. It was a knockoff of a knockoff. So if you get a new one, it may not be the same or as good as your original one. So the best thing to do is just replace the battery. You know the battery comes out, right? There's a little clip right there that you press and while you're holding it. That battery just slides right out. You can get a replacement battery for nine bucks, okay? So you're replacing the same piece of junk battery with another piece of junk battery, but it'll probably last for another year or so. I will put links to all these, the batteries and everything that I'm talking about below, affiliate links below. Now, another thing you can do, instead of getting the replacement piece of junk battery, which is a, uh, I think it's a 1800 milliamp hour battery is you can get a larger battery. Look at that. If you thought it was sexy with that small battery, look at that with that bigger battery. This is a 3800 milliamp hour battery. It's over twice the size, holds twice as much electrical usage as the uh, standard battery. Hopefully you can see that. So if you're going to replace the battery, don't get a small one, as we know that bigger is better. The 3800 milliamp hour battery is like $17 or $18. You might find it on sale for less. Affiliate link is below. And I've had one of these. This one is several years old, and it still works very well. As far as I can tell, it, it seems like it's holding a full charge all the time. So it may actually be better than the cheapo little battery. It seems to last longer. Now, another thing you can get is a battery eliminator. 
I don't have one. I used to have one. It worked great. But since I don't use these to transmit on, I don't really need it anymore. I gave it away because I'm a nice person. You take the battery out and it slides in just like the battery and it's got a little power cord and you plug that into your cigarette lighter so you can use the radio or listen to the radio in your car all day long forever using your car battery instead of an actual battery. So a battery eliminator, it's about 20 bucks. Affiliate link below. And of course, when your charger dies or the lights stop working or, you know, things are junk. I, I do not like my charger as much as I like. You can get a replacement for about 10 bucks, but why replace a piece of junk with another piece of junk? I have read have not used it myself, but B-Tech or Baofeng sells a six-way battery charger that I have read is a better quality charger. It lets you charge six batteries or six radios at a time, it costs 40 bucks. But what I have read, I can't vouch for it directly, is that it's better quality, it will last longer, and the lights, the blinky lights to tell you when it's charging or not charging actually work. All right, that's it. Those are some ways to make the battery last longer. It's all common sense stuff. Nothing earth-shaking or game-changing here. If you've got some tips to make the batteries last longer in the first place, leave a comment below. Please do not leave a 10-page comment explaining battery theory and chemistry of batteries and the history of who invented the bet. Nobody cares. You've got a tip to make it last longer. Leave it in two or three sentences or less. 10 page long comments explaining battery theory, radio theory, answering questions that nobody asked. Dickhead comments, arrogant comments, smarter than thou comments, soapbox stupidity comments. Those will all be pinned at the top for everybody to laugh at and make fun of you. If you leave a stupid comment like that in public, this is public, be prepared for someone, myself or a viewer, to call you out on it. This is not your soapbox for stupidity. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you on the trip.